Hello, my name is Steve. Uh, welcome to Alpico TV. Uh, today we're going to do a cooking show. We are going to make chicken cordon bleu sandwiches with sweet potato fries and bananas foster. So what I've done is I've cut up the sweet potatoes. Um, pretty much made them all about the same size. That way they'll cook evenly. So we don't have some getting done faster than the others. I do have some oil cooking over here and heating up. I'm going to drop these in there right now. Get those going. It's important to have the oil hot so when you drop the fries in there they don't absorb the grease and that way they'll sear off quicker, uh, quick enough so that they're not greasy and oily when they're done. Uh, while those cook, I guess what we will do is start with the uh, cordon bleu sandwiches. What I'm going to do is sear off some cherry smoked bacon to give the chicken some flavor and also have some flavoring for the sandwich itself. Nice hot pan. You want to get the oil hot and get the pan hot so you get some nice searing going on. So what we're trying to achieve is get some of the grease out of the out of the bacon. Coat the pan good with the flavoring so we're gonna impart the bacon flavor into the chicken breast once we throw the chicken and the bacon into the pan when the bacon's done. So Steve, what's a, what's a little bit of your background? How did you get into cooking? Uh, well, I started my uh, culinary schooling at LCC uh, a year and a half ago. Not really having any experience in cooking commercially at all, I just decided I would like to learn how to do it. So I started going to school. I wanted to go to school anyway and get an education, and LCC had a decent program, so I just started there. Are you more interested in the cooking side of things or the food side? A little of both. A little of both. I like to cook, but I also like to know what I'm cooking and make sure I use quality ingredients. Hence the reason I work with co-op and for the discount. <laughs> so you're, I mean, you're a nutrition guy, right? You, you know what's in what you eat. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So all the food here that's been um, supplied is from the co-op, if anybody's interested. We have Otto's chicken, um, chicken breast, boneless chicken breast. Peterson Farms, this is a cherry smoked bacon. These are local sweet potatoes uh, in the produce department. Organic Valley Swiss cheese we're gonna be using on the sandwiches. And then also we have uh, bananas, which obviously aren't going in Michigan, but organic, definitely. So was part of you pursuing culinary art that you would taste things where you thought that's not quite the way I want it or I know that I could do better? I was interested in learning how to cook and actually learn um, from somebody that actually knew what they were doing and then yeah going out to eat and spending $200 on a meal and being disappointed when you left. You know you start to wonder you know I know how to cook, I do my own cooking, and what is it going to take to make it actually better? So that's one of the reasons I ended up in this, in this uh, field that I'm in. How often do you experiment? Haha, <laughs> every day. <laughs> every meal. I rarely follow a recipe to a tea if there is one. Uh, I feel most recipes don't have enough spice in them anyway. So I usually add double compared to what they would actually call for just because it's just American food doesn't have a lot of flavor to it. So are you a, a, a measuring cup guy? Or no. Are you into like glugs and pinches? And no, no measuring cups. Yeah. 
and actually in school too we're taught that uh, when you do any baking measuring cups are not allowed because nothing ever turns out right you have to weigh everything out if you're going to do any kind of baking of bread but as far as cooking goes it's all by taste so you just make it to taste the way you want it to and that's all personal personal preference Well, the bacon's done, so we're gonna take this off and then get started on cooking the chicken breasts. You cook that right in the bacon grease? I'm gonna cook the breast right in the bacon grease, yes. I'm gonna try to impart some of the uh, cherry smoke into the breasts a little bit, give them some flavor. Uh, keep them from sticking. Well, I've heard it said before that you eat with your eyes first. You do. How much emphasis do you put on it? Um, that is the first thing you're going to do because that'll be the first thing you see. When a plate hits in front of you at a restaurant, you actually see it before you actually, and you, before you can smell it. Then you smell it, then you taste it. So it needs to look good, smell good, and taste good in that order. And that's what we were, we were taught that in school. I had a whole semester on just plating food. At LCC, where all we did is it didn't matter what it tasted like, it, it just had to look good. If it didn't look good, you pretty much failed that day. Oh, yeah, we would actually, you know, we want to have you want to have color and height are the two things, the two main things. You want to have the plate size be right so you don't have, you know, if your customer looks like you know they have a plate that they don't have a lot of food on, it looks like they're getting chintzed as far as cost goes. If the plate's too small and there's too much food on the plate, then it looks overcrowded and it's hard to make look good. So what we're trying to achieve is the chicken needs to be 165 degrees internal temperature, so it can be done. Otherwise you can get salmonella poisoning. So that's what we're going to achieve. We'll, think. we'll cook it until we temp it out at 165. So I'm going to temp the chicken, see where we're at. You want to get the fattest piece, um, get the thermometer in there good, it needs to be at least 165. We're not quite there yet, we're at about 120, so another couple of minutes and the chicken will be done. What I'm going to do is make a flavored roux for the sandwiches. So I'm going to put a little butter in with the bacon fat. you gotta, you got to use the bacon fat because it's the best part of the meal. Who doesn't use bacon fat? Let the butter melt, get a little flavoring going. Deglaze the pan as best as possible. Get any flavor chunks out of there. Start mixing in some flour. Yeah, you just I'm just gonna eye it up. It's kind of a makeshift brew. I'm gonna do just a uh, just for like a little little sauce on top of the sandwich when we're when we're eating it. Yeah, you're gonna want it to be kind of a sauce, the thickness of a of a normal sauce, and it's gonna be bubbling until I take it off of here, because once it's off the heat, it'll settle back down. But right now, because the heat's so so high. I'm not in your family, man. 
Plus you want to cook the roux off a little bit anyway because you don't want to have it taste like flour. You want to actually have it taste like the butter with the, with the bacon. So if you don't heat it up and boil it good, it's going to taste like flour, which it obviously is not what you're looking for. Uh, just the unbleached all-purpose from the co-op in the bulk section. That thickens up really quick in a flat pan. Oh yeah. Now if you'd add this to a saw, like to a stock, so if you took like a beef stock or a chicken or pork stock or something to this, is basically what you could use and then, you know, you could have a nice real thick creamy sauce of any kind. Or you could save what's left and add it to something else. So what we're going to do is we're going to start plating our food. Uh, we have a grilled bun on a plate right now. We're going to start with a slice of cheese. Swiss cheese baby Swiss from Organic Valley. Chicken breast. Two slices of the bacon that we cooked up. A bit of red onion. And then the roux sauce that we had made, we're gonna mix this up a little bit, it settled down a little bit, no big deal. Sauce, you don't need a whole lot of because it's gonna be really rich top of the sandwich. And some fries. Color's good. You want color. They are caramelized, yes. Very caramelized. Good. A little salt on the French fries or the sweet potato fries. A little pepper. That's our sandwich with our sweet potato fries. All right, for dessert, we're gonna do some banana sploster. So first what we wanna do, get the pan cooking good. We're gonna do a fair amount of butter to start. While that's melting down, take a take a banana, peel it open. And does it matter if they're spotted like that or green? Or no, the riper the better. I'm gonna hack it up in some chunks. We're gonna do uh, probably four batches possibly. So get your butter melting. Just want to add some brown sugar in with it. Gonna get some good caramelization going with the heat. Yeah, is that just brown sugar? 
sugar. Just plain brown sugar. You can use light or dark. It doesn't matter. Either are fine. Get the brown sugar to melt a little bit. Add the bananas. Make sure they're good and coated and caramelized as well. everything good and covered. The brown sugar, get a nice caramelization rolling. I do. It's a living With no, with the sun setting, yeah, you guys have a glow coming from behind you. I was gonna say, it's, it's not even bright, huh? Like, it's like, oh, dessert. <laughs> dessert. It's time for dessert. Yeah, what, what, how do you know if a banana is right? It all depends. That's all preference. For one more? Yep. This time I won't burn my hand. Hopefully. <laughs> oh, this is gonna light up.
Well, there you have it. That's uh, all we have for today. And I guess the bottom line is you don't have to have a gourmet kitchen to have a gourmet meal. This is something you can easily do out just picnicking or camping. Thank you and have a nice day. Coat the pan good with the flavoring so we're going to impart the bacon flavor into the chicken breast once we throw the chicken in the into the pan when the bacon's done. Sorry. <laughs> I think we're waiting for a minute. <laughs> There's Bambi. <laughs> well, the shot, yeah, it was a nice, uh, rhetorically, this meal's a sure shot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. As we're cooking the bacon. <laughs> <laughs> and there's Bob with the meat. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna be making some venison too, uh, but we're just waiting for that to arrive. <laughs> I love co-ops and there's something bright and cheerful about every co-op. I think community is the most important thing. I grew up coming to the East Lansing Food Co-op so I was one of the kids running around, you know, spilling stuff out of the bulk bins. She had today was delicious. I just love so much. It's a cheese that didn't, that wasn't completely white and had got the my, my special favorite is baby bok choy. So every time I come to the co-op, it's like, is there gonna be baby bok choy today? Because I love it. And today there was, so I was really excited. I've been going to the East Lansing Food Co-op for 15 years. So I guess since I was a baby, um, she carried me around in that bag. I guess and it was really embarrassing. <laughs> Um, but yeah. you were happy. When you buy local, you are supporting your friends and neighbors and cousins and aunts and uncles in the extended community and the money stays in the community and rolls over in that community numerous times, um, building wealth within the community. Plus, they're supporting local farmers and I think that that's a really good thing to do. Well, it's an educational experience for me, but it's also a very pleasant way to meet people and to talk with people. And co-ops are just fabulous. I mean, they take people and, and collect abil their individual abilities and, and, and collect them together and make them stronger uh, for, for the common good. And uh, if we did more of it, I think we would be a healthier, healthier society. Our health is even more than what we eat, you know, and that's the other thing about the co-op is it's offering a hand to be in community, at least at some level. The motivation is not to make a profit motivation is to provide a service. Yeah.